Ah, uh, it is high time for Dub Nation to be as close-knit as possible. I say in all my videos, the Golden State Warriors are about to be solid competitors next year with returning superstars in Clay Thompson and James Wiseman. But for now, we should sit down to support our team, creating scenarios and breaking down the mistakes which were unfortunately made during this long, crazy season of NBA basketball. A lot of opinions arose after the finale of the Warriors vs. the Grizzlies matchup. The majority of Dub Nation has stayed loyal and expressed their joy regarding how fiercely our team played, while the minority of the so-called fan base has started to play the blame game, searching for the weakest link, either a scapegoat. Some even dare to say that it was Stephen Curry's fault, and he is the one to blame for the Warriors' failure in this year's offseason. A hot take, isn't it? Let's take a closer look at what went wrong for the Dubs last week. But before we start this discussion, I would like you to play sports analytics and try to tell the future of the Dubs squad and what you think was the main factor in our team's lackluster off-season performance. Also, I would really like to hear your opinion, as I'm very curious what you, my dear subscribers, Golden State Warriors fans, and just passing by viewers, think about the league's future. Now grab some snacks, get yourself comfortable, and enjoy this video. But before that, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hit that notification bell to get updates on our latest NBA content. Also, feel free to leave in the comments section what else you'd like to see from my videos. Let's keep rolling. I will make it clear from the start, and make sure to watch the whole video to get my point of view right. Stephen Curry is a tremendous player, and he gave his 100% to help the Warriors. Yes, he is a human, after all, who is capable of making few mistakes. But without him, there wouldn't even be a word about the Golden State Warriors entering the playoff picture. We will start with digesting those mistakes from a statistics standpoint. Both Stephen Curry and Draymond Green did an amazing job putting up NBA 2K numbers, with Curry scoring 37 and 39 points in the game versus the Los Angeles Lakers and the Memphis Grizzlies on solid 46.4 and 52.2 field goal percentages respectively, along with Green's tremendous all-around efforts putting up triple doubles in one game and making a high impact defense-wise in another. Stephen Curry stayed in a positive plus-minus ratio for the whole play-in tournament, and Draymond Green had a zero plus-minus rating in a game versus the Lakers and a minus two rating in a game with the Grizzlies. Andrew Wiggins, Mr. Consistent himself, also made his solid contribution with 21 and 22 points scored in two games. But what went wrong for them? Number one, turnovers. That is the number one reason for the Warriors' loss in the game versus the Memphis Grizzlies. 21 turnovers in a playoff game is a horrendous number. Even Steph Curry and Draymond Green had at least six turnovers in each of those two play-in games. As one Reddit user perfectly summarized, the whole Golden State game that day, comeback and turnover, turnover, brick, turnover and it absolutely seemed like that each possession, giving the fans many heart attacks in the process. The Golden State Warriors turned the ball over 60 times in the final three games of the 2020-21 NBA season. Yes, the Dubs' postseason aspirations were literally thrown down the drain by their sloppy play. Their 15 second-half turnovers with the help of questionable officiating cost them the playoff spot against the Los Angeles Lakers. The referees then attempted to make amends against the Memphis Grizzlies by tossing the dubs a few extra bones, which they then dropped to a hungry, vicious, and most importantly disciplined Grizzlies squad. Number two, the inability of the rest of the team to take the lead on offense. Yes, Wiggins and Poole gave solid performances in those two games, but man, Draymond went one for five from the field in the game versus the Los Angeles Lakers, and gosh, do I even have to talk about Golden State's last possession in the game against the Memphis Grizzlies? Knowing the Warriors were only a layup away from winning the game in regulation makes it difficult for Dubs fans to sleep at night. On the final play of the fourth quarter, Green had a straight lane to the hoop and sunk it. 
Wiggins, on the other hand, hit a three-pointer off the backboard in overtime, while Poole's costly turnover with 30 seconds remaining was the last nail in the Warriors' coffin. Number three, the Grizzlies did a good job defending Stephen Curry. And Dylan Brooks deserves all the credit for this. He was more effective than any other defender was against Chef Curry, and numbers prove that. Stephen Curry's stats against other defenders, 1.18 points per play, 3 for 7 field goals made on 43% field goal percentage, and 3 long-range shots made out of an attempted 7 each game. While playing against Dylan Brooks, Curry scored 0.85 points per play, going 6 for 15 from the field on 40% field goal percentage, and getting 3 for 8 from beyond the arc. Kudos to the Grizzlies and Dylan. And what amazes me even more is that Stephen Curry still managed to get 39 points regardless. Number 4. Ja Morant. This one is simple. Have you seen this man play? He was straight savage that game. His floater is a thing of beauty, and this game showed how much his play style resembles that of Derrick Rose and Russell Westbrook. Jaw took that loss against the Warriors in a humble way and bounced off with some fire fighting for a place in the playoffs. Kudos to the Grizzlies fans and Jaw Morant. Number 5. The Golden State Warriors' backup players have disappointed. Kevin Looney scored six points against the Lakers, but just three points against the Grizzlies. It was a different story against Memphis, where he only had four rebounds and three assists in 24 minutes. Both games could have gone differently if Looney had been a little better. Regrettably, he did not. With James Wiseman expected to return, I expect Looney to return next season, although in a more restricted role. Next up, Eric Paschal. It wasn't so much what Pascal did that got him on this list as it was rather what he didn't do. Pascal missed the final few weeks of the season and, as a result, he wasn't in the rotation when the Warriors needed another scoring option the most. Pascal's 17.4 minutes per game increased his 36-minute scoring average from his rookie season, indicating that he was a productive offensive player when he entered the game. It was surprising that he didn't play in the play-in competition, and it was even more disappointing that fans only saw him play in one of the team's final 24 games. Michael Mulder was on fire heading into the play-in tournament. As one of the Warriors' biggest challenges off the bench, the sniper had been nailing it. Unfortunately, his enthusiasm was stifled in the play-in tournament. Mulder was given the time he needed to maintain his rhythm. Against the Lakers, he was given 22 minutes, and against the Grizz, he was given 9 minutes. Then Mulder's time was cut short against Memphis because Curry played 47 minutes. But he didn't do much in those minutes, scoring just 4 points. He shot 2 for 4 from the field and missed both of his 3-point attempts. His performance against the Lakers was not much better as he only scored five points on one of his four three-point attempts. Over the Warriors' last 13 games, Mulder has averaged 12.9 points per game. Golden State could have been playing the Jazz if he had hit a couple of his triples. Though Mulder is expected to return, it is frustrating that he was unable to produce more in his two most important games. Overall, it was great to see our team taking a shot in this year's NBA play-in tournament, and there are a lot of positives heading into next season. And what are your thoughts? What do you think was the most impactful factor amongst them all? What do you think the Warriors should have done to win the play-in tournament? Tell us what you think in the comments down below, and once again, make sure to leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button to catch up with the best NBA content. Our team needs us the most now. If you like this video, make sure to watch my other videos about the Warriors franchise. Thank you for watching.